What I've learned this month is that I can't vlog to save my life. Hi besties, welcome. I hope you're doing well. It's been a while. Last month, if you didn't know, I ran the Summer Splash Readathon over on Instagram and Storygraph and Discord with a bunch of other amazing creators. It was so much fun and I had such a blast. But it turns out running a readathon is a lot of work. <laughs> Besides running the readathon and reading the books, I had very little time to film and edit and everything. And then I also had some personal stuff going on last month, but I do have some footage from the month. So I've decided to split my Summer Splash footage up into two videos. So today I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the first half of my Summer Splash reads and my Summer Splash excursions. And before I get into any Summer Splash content, let me give you some sponsored content. That's right, hashtag spawn, hashtag ad. Because this week's video is sponsored by none other than Book of the Month. That's right, my besties. They're my favorite people to work with and I just think the service is so cool or I wouldn't recommend it to you. Book of the Month is a super popular and always growing online book service for readers like you and like me. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help find readers their new favorite book. Their team vets hundreds of books every month and comes up with a curated selection of the best new and early release titles so that you can spend less time trying to figure out what you're going to read next and more time actually reading that book. Revolutionary. One of my favorite things about Book of the Month is that they're completely risk-free. If one month none of the titles are screaming your name, you can totally skip No Questions Asked and you won't be charged for that month. Easy peasy. Plus there's nowhere else you're going to find a new hardcover fiction for $9.99, but that's all you'll pay for your first book when you sign up with the code SIZZLE today. Let me show you the two books that I chose for the month because I'm very excited about both of them and they're both a branch out for me. Pretty much every month I pick the literary fiction or sometimes the romance, but this month I picked two thrillers. Who am I? Who is she? I don't know. One of the titles I chose was The Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias and this book is about a hitman who's in debt because his daughter is sick and he goes on this quest to try to save his daughter's life. Plus I really love the TV show Barry. So when I found out this was about a guy accepting a job as a hitman I was like that's right up my street. Entering my hitman era? Who knows? <laughs> my top pick for the month is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. It sounds like Knives Out meets Wuthering Heights meets And Then There Were None. Trapped on an island where someone is killing them one by one, the Darkers must reckon with their present mystery as well as their past secrets before the tide goes out and all is revealed. By now y'all know how much I love Book of the Month, but if you wanna get your first hardcover, new release fiction book for only $9.99. Click the link at the top of the description and use the code SIZZLE. Thank you Book of the Month so much for sponsoring this video. I love y'all. Let's get into Summer Splash. First I'll show you all the vlog footage I do have and then I will fill in the many gaps and I will tell you how I felt about all of these books. Sally, roll clip.
I'm currently stuck behind a train, but it's worth it because I'm on my way to have dinner with my friend Allie. Oh my God, this is the longest train in all of existence ever. My bestie Goral. Um, and Allie is a recent boomer. Part <laughs> Allie is a boomer, has no idea what's happening. No. But Allie's participating in the readathon, and we've been hanging out all day. And we went to a bookstore, and we're gonna show you what we got. Okay, this one, Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff, I got because of Allie, because Allie loves it. I endorse it. I have blue A's or bluettes. Bluettes. I like blue A's. <laughs> Um, it is not a French book, but apparently it is a little book of little vignettes that all circle back to the color blue, like Miles Davis for women. Perfect analogy. Thanks. And then another alley pick is White Girls by Hilton Alls, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. And it says it's about blackness, queerness, movies, Brooklyn, love, AIDS, fashion, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like essays, right? Mm -hmm. We're gatekeeping Joan Didion from the boys. We are. Shameless self-promo. We're reading this for my Patreon book club this month. So if you want to read it along with us, you can. And then another another queen of my life is Mary Oliver, my favorite poet. This is Upstream and it's essays. And I've actually never read any of her essays. I've only read I didn't know she had her essays. poetry. So I'm really excited. Well, my final book is a miniature version of this coffee table book that I have. It's all about flowers. She's pretty. Stunning. And sometimes you just buy things because they're pretty. I did get You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Aquakia Mezzi. And I'm so excited because this is like a romance, I think, is in it. But there's also, I don't know. I don't know what it's about. It says I the just, costs of love as well. But yeah, so. I just know their writing is supposed to be amazing. We each have one brain cell. And when we're together, it's like, man, Sparks are flying. Vision. They're like, I was trying to get out of the parking spot. <laughs> Thanks, Daddy. <laughs> so we're about to go read. I'm reading The Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler, which is... Well, I'm reading Lovers and Writers by Lily King, and I was really enjoying it until reading a sex scene with an old man this morning, and... That was something. But other this than that... This is after last night when you texted me, this book might make you horny. Yeah. And you're like... <laughs> yeah. And then I was immediately not... The junior league. The, the D.A.R. <laughs> the, the Albuquerque chapter of the yeah. D.A.R. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me tell you all my final thoughts about the first seven books that I read for Summer Splash. First book I read for Summer Splash was The Swimmers by Julia Tsuka. I read this for the Surf's Up category because there's a pool on the cover and I needed to read a book with a body of water on the cover. This was not the best way to kick off the Summer Splash, I will not lie, because I was very, very disappointed in this book. I thought the concept sounded so cool. Basically, for the first half of the book, it follows these people in this sort of choppy, narrative style. All these people that go to this community pool that's underground and what this pool means to everybody. For everybody at the pool, it's sort of their safe space, their space to zone out, to disconnect from the world. But one day there's like this hairline crack in the pool. And everybody starts freaking out about it. All of the people are sort of forced to give up this sanctuary, this safe haven and face the real world. And I thought that concept sounded really interesting about the way that community spaces can bring people together, what happens when we are without them and things Things like that. And then the second half of the book is about one of the swimmers, Alice, who has dementia. The thing that just didn't stick for me about this book was I didn't feel like I got to know enough about any of the characters 
to care about what was happening to them. I think it could have been really really cool if maybe we had gotten a little more about each character but instead we got just enough for me to be interested in who some of these people were and then it switched to only being about Alice and we didn't hear about any of the other swimmers anymore. Why do we have all of this stuff at the beginning about the pool and the swimmers if they're not going to factor into the story later? I thought a lot of the writing was really interesting so I would be interested in picking up another book from her but this just was not it for me. I was next up I read Along for the Ride by Sarah Desen and I have not shut up about it since I reread it because I love it so much. I read this for the Roots space which is to read a childhood favorite. This was one of my favorite books in middle school. I had the most fun rereading this. I was really worried I was gonna read it and be like that did not hold up. That was not a fun time. No. I had a blast and a half. I love Eli Stock with my whole soul. He is the perfect man. Nobody can tell me otherwise. One thing I really really like about this book is that the main character is really flawed and from the jump she makes a lot of assumptions about people that just don't end up being true and so she sort of has to face her own bias and learn that people aren't always what they seem on the outside and that giving people a chance can often prove you wrong. I didn't even say what this book is about. Auden West is about to go to college but in the last summer before she leaves for college she decides to go visit her father and his new wife and baby in the beach town that he lives in. She goes and she meets some new people and she makes some new friends and she meets a boy named Eli and it's a really fun summer. I just love this book. I love Sarah Dessen. I love Along for the Ride. I will keep reading this forever and ever and ever. Next I read Real Life by Brandon Taylor and I read this for the Heat Wave Square which was to read a book set entirely in a summer and it's set in the summertime at a Midwestern university where where our main character Wallace is in grad school doing lab research and all his friends are also there for grad school. This book made me feel ill. It made me so sad. There's so much difficult stuff going on in here but so much of the pain of this book is really quiet everyday pain. The kind of pain that wears you down and makes you submit to it. You're reading about this character who has these really difficult things happen to him but he's so used to them happening that he doesn't even necessarily give them the weight that they deserve. It was so so well written. I have been thinking about it since I finished it. A lot of trigger warnings for this one so look those up if you need them. It's about human relationships and relationships to self, racism and sexism and academia and all of the difficult things about being a human being and being a queer black person. In the book Wallace has to deal with a lot of casual racism both from his co-workers and from his friends and the people he loves most and there's this passage that I think is so beautiful where he says there will always be good white people who love him and want the best for him but who are more afraid of other white people than of letting him down. It is easier for them to let it happen and to triage the wound later than to introduce an element of the unknown into the situation. No matter how good they are, no matter how loving, they will always be complicit, a danger, a wound waiting to happen. I really think this is a book that white people need to read because reading the in-depth character study of Wallace while his white friends were not showing up for him the way that they should, it really made me reflect and think about the ways in which I'm complicit and the ways in which I stay silent when I shouldn't. I think more people should read it but take care while reading because it does have some really really difficult topics. Randy Taylor can write a fucking book. Next I read the Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. I read this as a buddy read with Seiki and Sierra, two of my favorite books to grammars, besties, and summer splash creators. This book was crazy because it was written in the 90s, but it takes place in like 2024 and onward. It was written as sort of a dystopia at the time. It's really hard to read this and not think that it looks like the planet that we have destroyed. It's written in journal entries of our main character, Warren. God, it's just really good. It sort of turns into a survival story. It's also about our main character beginning her own religion called Earthseed, which is about change being the only constant that there is. This was really great. The audiobook was really awesome. I definitely want to read Parable of the Talents. So I definitely recommend it. This one was for the branch out space because I was told it was sci-fi and I never read sci-fi. 
I don't know if I would necessarily consider it sci-fi, very, very light on the sci-fi, but I did really enjoy myself. Successful branch out, if you ask me. After that, I read Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This one was for the summer vacation spot because it's a translated work. It's translated from the Japanese. And this, I thought, was okay. I had really high hopes for this one. This has been at the top of my TBR for so long. I have just genuinely already forgotten every plot point in it for the most part. I think the concept is so cool and there could be such interesting stuff done with the concept but the stories that were in this one just didn't grab me the way that I wish they had. The concept of the book is that there's this coffee shop and if you sit at this table you can travel back to a moment in time and you have to be back before the coffee gets cold. I just felt that this one was pretty mediocre. I don't really get the hype if I'm being honest. Sorry to say. Next I read I Can Share a Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. Now, this one was for the Buddy Reads spot because it was our official Summer Splash Buddy Read. Listen, there's been a lot of Share a Wheeler slander around these parts lately. This was the official Buddy Read for the Summer Splash Readathon and a lot of people did not vibe with it. I'm sorry. I thought it would be a really fun summer thriller romance vibe. And if you ask me, that's exactly what it was. I had a fun time reading Share a Wheeler. Do I think it's the best book ever written? No. Have I been thinking about it since I finished? No. But did I have an absolute blast while I was reading it? Yes. It's super queer. There's these clue elements and this sort of scavenger hunt vibe that I really liked. A lot of people are saying they didn't like the twist. I didn't really like the twist either. I was like, wow, we did all that for this. I do get why people didn't super vibe with it, but I did have a lot of fun. And honestly, that's all I wanted out of the book. So it met my expectations last for part one of my Summer Splash reviews. I read Intimations by Zadie Smith. I have mixed feelings about this. It didn't challenge me the way that I wanted it to, I guess. I thought these essays would be a little bit more thought provoking, a little bit more like sitting in my memory for a while, making me think. But really, I just felt like I read them and then I had read them if that makes sense. I will say I like Zadie Smith's voice a lot. This made me really excited to read her fiction because I think I might get on with that a little bit better. I didn't dislike it. I had a fine enough time reading it. This I read for the touch grass square. I read it entirely outside on my porch and that was fun. It was nice to read it outside. But yeah, I just thought this one was only okay for me but very excited to read Zadie Smith's fiction. Some of the challenge squares that I completed for the first like half of Summer Splash, I did get lost, which was go to a place in my town I've never been before because it turns out there's an indie bookstore that I've never been to before. And that's the one I went to with my friend Allie, which was all in the vlog footage. It's called Odd Bird Books. It's amazing. And it's my new favorite place to get books. Like I am gonna be a regular. And shout out to the man who runs Odd Bird because we had a fully like an hour conversation about all the books we were buying. Truly really peak book buying experience. I'm so glad I went. I will be going all the time. I also started my I Like It Picasso. I technically didn't finish my art project, but I checked off the square anyway because I spent a lot of time working on it. But I'm making a cardigan that looks like the cover of I'll Give You the Sun. Let me insert it here. And I'm happy because I haven't crocheted in a hot minute and it's gotten me back into it. And that is like so exciting. I finished the Track Star Square because I participated in reading sprints. I led so many reading sprints this month. Oh my God. But it was fun to read with people and know that there were people watching or people in the discord reading at the same time as me and then I also did the photo op challenge first Instagram challenge was to recreate a cover of a book or redesign a cover of a book if you don't like the original cover as with most of my challenges I chose along for the ride because this is not my favorite cover I will not lie I mean it brings back a lot of memories because it's literally the copy of the book I had in middle school but I don't like it when real people are on books even if it's only their bottom halves bikes are a huge huge part of along for the ride so I designed this cover for it instead and honestly I wish I had this cover because I really like it I was really proud of it those are all the ones that I did in the first half of summer splash very soon you will see the rest of the bingo board get filled up and I will tell you about the rest of my summer splash reads the easiest way to support me and my channel is to hit the subscribe button and also to subscribe to my patreon we read a book club book together every month and we read a Shakespeare play together every month as well as having an amazing discord community that link will be in the description and if you want to support the channel it would mean the world to me like this video if you're happy that I'm back on the youtube.com I'm happy I'm back I'm sorry I was gone for so long comment down below and tell me if you participated in summer splash tell me what your favorite book you read was and what your favorite challenge prompt was because I would love to know it's been a while so I almost forgot to say it thank you so much for watching and in case you haven't heard it today I love you bye